Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Nanolade Zed Dawn. I remain your host, Chad of Fury333, and this last match for tonight is going to be between Hellwar and North Chilean G on Living Lands. Little classic map, and two fairly decent players, so let's get going. What the heck? Whoa, 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 whoa. Must have misclicked something there. Okay. Hellwar going for the Cloaky Bot Factory, and North Chilean G going for the Amphib Factory. So, we've actually seen Amphib versus Cloaky recently, and... Oh, wow, North Chilean G being super aggressive. Proxy expanding right off the bat with her commander. Probably going to be using this conch here to expand in the back lines, although not doing so so far. While Hellwar going for the more traditional setup of getting their main base going with the Conjurers, in this case, going out over to expand to the corners. Actually, probably reclaim from the corners and then expand to the corners. So, North Chilean G right now, a little surprised they aren't actually... There they are, there's the expansion. About to say I was surprised they weren't doing it, but they're they're doing it, so they're doing it. But yeah, as I was saying, Clokeybot versus Amphib is a matchup which has been up to this point seen as Amphib's favor, but then people realized, well, don't use glaives. Just use warriors and rockos, and then Amphib just doesn't really work. I mean it can work, but it's a lot easier for Cloakie to win in that matchup if Glaives aren't your primary army. At least against that in that one matchup. In most matchups, Glaives are a great main force. And I think Hellwar is going to switch up as soon as they see that there's stuff going on. Actually, going for a Gremlin. I'm not sure if they expect Arians because of their very slow scouting rate. Because, yeah, this is pretty... It's a minute and a half and nothing has shown up in their base. So they're probably expecting an air rush. Or it could just be for scouting themselves. Anyway, no air rush is forthcoming. And Hellwar should see now that North Chilean G is going for the Amphib Factory. So, that will reveal at least the what the matchup is. Yeah, there. Oh, no, wait, that was a defender. I don't think Hellwar knows. No, they no, they know. They they did see the duck there for a sec. And, okay, yep, they know. They definitely know. Going for the Warriors instead of going for the Glaives. That is the response. So, Hellwar has enough matchup knowledge here. They know what to do. They're actually a slight economic advantage as well. They've taken the corner quite effectively, while North Chilean G, despite having expanded forward, they haven't actually expanded that quickly, focusing far more on building up their army rather than low priority in their factory. Actually, neither has North Chilean G, but for that matter, I think North Chilean G is actually not using priorities at all. However, they're also not building up North Chilean G. Sorry, Hellwar is not focusing on building up. North Chilean G is focusing so much on their army that their economy is falling behind quite a lot. At this point, it really is almost a matter of, is there a timing North Chilean G can take advantage of? But not really, because Hellwar is going to very rapidly build up an army that can actually, well, make use of that economic advantage. And that's not happening for North Chilean G in the meantime. Like, North Chilean G, with the army they have right now, before the advantage swings, if it hasn't already because of that warrior, they haven't done much with it. But at any rate, with the expansions they are building up, they should be okay. They just need to expand a little bit more. Move over to the corner here, move over definitely to the corner here. These ducks will get rid of the glaive. One advantage to the amphib Cloaky matchup right now, because of the fact that Cloaky's main response is Warriors and, Ro and Rockos, is that Warriors and Rockos are slow. So, really, the amphib player, all they have to do is protect their outlying bases, put enough there that a Warrior or a Rocco will not really want to rush in which actually is quite a bit but the initial pass is just send a few ducks and get rid of any straggler glaives and then send in your conches and conches actually have a 7.5 per second build time they're a slightly faster builder than any than most builders most builders are five building power per second so or five metal per second so at this point north chilean g if they just clear out whatever's been done and then expand they'll be able to still keep the economic advantage and North Chilean G is going to be on the hook to make sure that they actually keep pressure with the slower moving units. On the other hand, though, Hellwar going for Zeus, and I don't agree with that. For reasons including but not limited to that one right there dying. But mostly it is just that, despite the lightning gun, which... It's not bad, but it's not great enough. It's There's really not enough moving forward. The Warriors are the better option for dealing with the Ducks. Boys are not bad for dealing with warriors, and the sides are out sort of to deal with everything. But yeah, there's the duck. At this point, though, Hellwar already expanded enough to take that southeast side, so 
with Hellwar having the northwest and southeast corners, they're not in a bad position. The one downside right now is that they don't have anything assisting their factories. They don't have any excess right now. They will eventually, but they don't right now. They're fine. They're building enough across the map. It's just that they're building a lot into tiny little pockets. They're investing loads into the corners and not really enough into actually taking a huge amount of territory going forward. So I'm not really sure what I think about that. At the same time, though, North Chilean G having a hard time getting in, so Hell War... They should be okay. They just need to build up anything. Hell War, you're accessing metal. As is North Chilean G, but they've been doing that for a while. I assume they'd have figured it out by now, but no, they have not. Both players accessing metal badly. In fact, both players rather short on constructors. In both cases. Hell War a bit less short on constructors, but a lot of it's the reclaim, which isn't doing a whole lot of good. I mean, they're accessing. There's no storing of that reclaim. That's, this is a waste. They desperately need to start building things up. I don't know if they realize this. I don't know if they're looking at their economic panels at all. Like, right at the top of the screen, you can see your metal and energy, and your metal is flashing. So, North Chilean G, however, is on top of that, or at least setting up to be on top of that, with the caretaker up front. But even then, that's not enough. Like, both players aren't really producing more than 10 metal per second worth of units. Or of anything. The first player to build a caretaker near their factory or use a worker on their factory is going to have a massive advantage in this game, just because of that fact. And I don't really see either player in a hurry to do so. No one has any constructors in their queue, and all the builders are out expanding. None are at home. This is actually really opening up for a swingy game, because as soon as anyone gets either a construction advantage, like a production advantage, through assistance on the constructors, or... And both players actually seem to be responding by upgrading their commanders. Or they deal with the one or two constructors that either player has. That could easily swing the match. Like right now, it's pretty much even either way. Both players have roughly even economy, roughly even territory. Army composition is a little bit awkward for Hell War. And the sides are okay, but they're tricky to use and at this point dead. But... The Spectre coming in, I don't see the point. It seems like a bit of a waste of funds. And North Chilean G, we just saw North Chilean G deal with Spectres coming at them last game. Which is actually played after this one. I think I did these in reverse order accidentally. But still, Hell Wars not going to have any problems dealing with, with Sharpshooters, with Spectres. They aren't using Fleas, but they're going to just scout out for it. They have loads of ducks. That'll work well enough for scouting. So at this point, Hell War, I don't understand their... Ah! Conjurer, never mind. Conjurer needs to be used to assist the factory. Of to, just right-click the factory. Assist that thing. If you assist that thing, you get an advantage. You get a massive production advantage with North Chilean G has not even thought of yet. And North Chilean G, same thing. You have a massive production advantage if you did that same thing with a conch. Actually, more massive production advantage because conches have a higher build rate than everything else. Although it looks like North Hell War has, in fact, noticed... Getting the Caretaker up, it will take a little while because 5 build power per second, but once that is up, that'll help a lot. Although at this point, Hellwar is also going to be getting up a Fusion Plant, which will overdrive a bunch of stuff and will require more Caretakers to work out stuff, but Hellwar is using their economy. They aren't accessing as much as North Chilean G. They're focusing a lot more on building up static defenses around the map than they are around building production for their mobile military force, but they are spending money. That's what counts. Or at least it sort of counts. I mean, it's not like they're building bad defenses or in bad defensive positions. So this is still worthwhile. It's a little bit static. I mean, it is starting to grind the match a bit. Like, basically, as soon as two or three characters spot... Like, one character is going to be quite a lot. And especially if there were two or three characters, that would be massive. And at this point, it looks like North Chilean G focusing more on getting a caretaker for reclaim rather than for a proxy factor, for instance. Which won't do them any good. And they aren't even really upgrading their commander. And the commander in a tight spot right now. One good... Ooh, the warrior coming in here trying to take out the commander. Because really, one good fight for Hellwar would take out the commander. And there go most of the ducks. Actually, there go all of the ducks. One conch left as well. And North Chilean G's commander. One defender shot away from death. And not quite. Holy crap, that was close. North Chilean G's commander still alive, still kicking. Except for the stinger death. Wow! Quite the kill there! Just don't even go for the commander, just hit the thing next to it and let the death explosion finish off the commander. I don't even know if Hellwar wanted to do that, but holy crap did that ever work.
I thought the stinger explosion wasn't quite powerful enough. Like, I knew it had a death explosion, because pretty much everything does, and it's actually never in the description when I think of it. I know every, pretty much every unit, they're usually fairly small, like, usually not even big enough to actually damage other things, but pretty much every unit and building has a death explosion. And that's a little known thing, which usually doesn't matter too much, but in this case, it did. And with North Chilean G's commander gone, there's very little frontline construction power. Certainly nothing that defends itself. And... Yeah, otherwise... Man, if, if that commander had been, like, one commander with away from the Stinger, it would still be alive right now. And Hellwar wouldn't be in this position where they're basically just... Well, okay, they would still be in a position where they're knocking down North Chilean G's door, because North Chilean G had not used that much to actually build up. They really were accessing for most of this game. I mean, Hellwar is about to lose their commander as well, but that's... Actually, no, it looks like they're, they're going to be a bit more defensive. They're going to be a bit more cautious. They are dangerously close to that Stardust, though, and we just saw what happened with Death Explosions. I don't think Stardust Death Explosions are quite as bad, but I could be wrong. Actually, what is the Stardust Death Explosion? Is it... How do I... There it is. I think that's 600 is the distance rather than the damage dealt. Anyway. Ah, oops. Anyway, when it comes to this, it's probably over. Actually, is this... Well, no, actually, I think that's actually damage. I think that is the damage dealt. 200 damage, which was... which makes sense. So yeah, that's Stinger Death. We'll see, actually, if it kills off the glaives when it explodes. We'll never know! Never mind! That was critically irrelevant. It, the one thing that's not super well documented, it's kind of documented, but when a unit's built, you can't find out, is what is the death explosion damage? And also the radius. But as far as I know, you can't... Oh, never mind, there it is. Space and X. That's what it is. But yeah, that was that. We learned a lot more about death explosions in this, this particular match. We also had more object lessons and why you never want to excess. Actually, Hell War... For the most part, yeah, did not excess as much. They produced more metal, though. They actually did have an economic advantage, but on top of that, they used, like, this is this is how much they took out of the ground, and this is how much they actually put into other things. Like, the margin is way different. And that's just because they didn't excess as much. That's because they put a lot more into defense, and they actually put a lot more into their production as well, into their units. But that was more near the end. As you can see, it's fairly parallel up until the point where Caretaker started to be built, and then it just went out of control. So yeah, that was that. And if there's one thing you can take away from this, it is Space NX. Find out the death explosion damage, because everything has a death explosion. Like, literally everything has a death explosion, just that most things, like Glaze, for instance, 10 damage within its own model. Like, there's almost nothing there. So yeah. Damage value, distance. I still think it was hilarious, though. The Stinger just happened to deal its 200 damage to a commander immediately next to it that had less than 200 health. That almost never happens. But when it does, it's a very nice little proxy commander kill. So, I'm going to be signing off for tonight, then. That is it for me. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you learned something. Thank you for watching, and have a good night, everyone.